Hello, everybody. How's everybody doing today? Just going to wait a minute or two just to let some people come into the room, come into the live, join us. If you guys don't know who I am, by the way, my name is Coach Danny. Um, I am one of the coaches with our Love Advice TV team, uh, with my ex again, with Happily Committed. Um, and, you know, I'm just super excited to be here with you guys today on this live uh, to talk about this topic that a lot of people have been asking you about, which is the reasons for why your ex is not talking to you. Um, I would love for you guys to put your names down in the comment box below so I know who we have on the live. Tell me where you're from. Just give me a little bit of information before we get started. Uh, Jay, this can be both for men and women. This isn't this isn't about a particular sex, gender, none of that. It's really kind of information for everybody. King of Zombies, what's up, man? Megan, how are you? Um, I'm actually currently in LA as well, so nice to meet you, Jessica. Hello. Looks like we've got a lot of people tuning in right now, which is awesome. Again, make sure you put your name down below. Send me a hi. Tell me where you're from. Hello, Kelly. How are you? Diane, Megan, Sadiq. Feriel. I hope I pronounced that right. How's it going, Calvin, Florida? I will actually be in Florida this upcoming week. Nice to meet you. We got Georgia in the house. India, we got India, Tunisia. Amazing. Hello, Jay again from Cali. Nice to meet you. Denny, Oscar, Glenn, Sabrina, Rajesh. Kay Smith from New Jersey. How's it going? Kethron. All right. So I would love to say hi to everybody, obviously, but we have over 90 people in the room right now. So let's just kind of jump right into the topic. So obviously, guys, what we are talking about today is the reasons for why your ex is not talking to you. I know this is a difficult subject. I know this is something that a lot of people struggle with, particularly when you have freshly come out of a relationship because everything inside of you wants to fix it. You want to rectify what happened. You feel guilty. There, there's so many emotions that are running in your mind, right? And I wanted to kind of go over maybe some of the potential reasons for why our ex is not talking to us, right? And again, like I said, it's it's a difficult thing to navigate because a lot of the times we let our emotions kind of take the wheel. And when we let our emotions take the wheel, we make irrational decisions. It's really hard for us to kind of think objectively and step outside of ourselves to try to understand what's really going on. So one of the primary things that I see quite often is, you know, there's a level of sad, a level of, of, of hurt and pain. And when that happens, depending on the person's personality type, you know, they may be avoidant and they have a tendency of shutting down and closing off and not really wanting to have any kind of confrontation. Um, they may just be too hurt from the entire situation and they're trying to process the emotions and they're really trying to understand what's going on. Um, you know, another part that I see quite often is frustration and anger. You know, if somebody is angry and somebody's upset about the situation, they may be, you know, relying on their pride and their ego to kind of get them through the breakup in general. Um, and they may not want to speak at that point. You know, oftentimes I find that when people are in a really angry and frustrated place, they, they have a tendency of saying things that they don't mean. Um, and that's difficult. That's really hard to, to, to be able to navigate. So, you know, these, these emotions really play a part in the reasons for why it's your ex is not talking to you. And the questions that we have to ask ourselves in that situation is, are we actually listening to their request, right? If your ex is not speaking to you, 
and you are desperately trying to get in contact with them because you want to fix it. And if you could just have that one conversation, if you could just talk to them, you can change everything. Everything can go back to normal. Everything can go back to the way that it was. That's not necessarily the case. And most of the time, it doesn't work that way. Because if you think about it, your ex isn't talking to you for a reason. And a lot of that has to do with maybe some of the history in the relationship, right? So if you if you are incessantly texting them, if you were calling them, if you're like, hey, I just want to talk to you, I just want to understand what's going on, that may also be a reason for why the relationship ended in the first place, right? That kind of needy, clingy behavior. And they may not have felt completely understood in the relationship. They may not have felt like they really had a voice or they were being respected. Um, and when I, when, when that happens, it's it, very important to take a step back to really understand, you know, why we are approaching this the way that we're approaching it, why we are, are feeling the way that we're feeling. I get it. And I empathize because it's easy for me to say that being on the opposite side of the screen, right? I'm telling you, Hey, just give them space, respect their boundaries. But when you're emotional, when you're hurt, it's really difficult to do that. It's really hard to, to view your circumstance and your situation objectively. But I am telling you, it is what is necessary in order for you to be able to reconnect and to potentially open the lines of communication again, right? By you not respecting their boundary, by you not, you know, taking the hint, them not wanting to talk to you, that in and of itself is you putting your emotions and your feelings over theirs. Is your hurt more important than theirs, right? And again, you know, this also depends on who's watching this. Right, you the person who broke up with your ex, or are you the person who was broken up with? And my assumption would be a lot of the people who are watching this video have been broken up with. And if that's the case, you know, this applies. It's about really understanding emotionally where your partner was coming from, where your ex was coming from, and really approach this in a sense strategically, right? What is it, what is necessary in order for you to get in contact with your ex? And there's two things when it comes to that. The first thing is that you have to make an active change with yourself. Take the time, take the silence, take the space to really take a step back and say, you know, what am I accountable for? Are there any behaviors that I was exhibiting in the relationship that potentially led to the breakup? And the way that I am currently acting, if I am being very needy and clingy, was that a pattern of behavior in the relationship as well, right? And the other thing is change the strategy. If your strategy has been to incessantly try to contact them, to incessantly try to get it, to talk to them, to text them, to call them, all of those things, if it's not working and it's actually pushing your partner further and further, or your ex further, further away, stop. Take a breath. Take a step back and understand that, you know, you have to try something else and maybe the silence and maybe the space is the best thing that you possibly can do in this moment. You know, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over again, expecting different results. So a big part of this is going to be introspection, right? And when people ask me, you know, what do I do? What is it that I do? What, what can I do to get my ex to talk to me again? You know, what actions can I take? How can I, you know, circumvent what's happening here? The reality of the situation is that sometimes you just can't. You have to respect what that person is saying to you. You have to understand that there are boundaries. You have to understand that if you start to cross those boundaries, you're shooting yourself in the foot. So the first thing that you have to do is give them what they want. Give them the space. You know, I say this to people all the time, actions speak louder than words. And if their actions are showing you that they need the space and they need the time, back off, give them that time. And in reality, that space and that time that you are giving them is crucial for you as well. It's something that you may need and you didn't even know that you needed it. It's time for you to reevaluate your, your circumstance. And for me, what I try to say is, Utilize something that I, that I call the three R's, right? So you reevaluate your circumstance, you reinvest in yourself, and then you reinvent yourself. And by doing this, you bring an entire different energy and, and, and level of attraction so that you potentially have the opportunity to get in communication with your ex again, right? Don't push them. 
the more you push them, the more they will actually go further and further away from you. You know, because a lot of the times they may just not want confrontation. They may not want to have to deal with that. Um, so again, you know, taking a step back and evaluating your emotions. And the best thing that you can do during this period of time is fill your schedule. Do things that make you happy. Try to, to you know, avoid these long periods of doing nothing, right? If you sit in that void for too long, you start to overthink everything. You start to overanalyze. And that's what our brains do best, right? We compute everything. We take everything and we try to figure out what to do. It's, it's, it's a natural part, you know, of the process, but in order to really kind of stop and to really kind of take a step back and really understand the situation, you have to fill your, you have to, first of all, take the time for yourself. And second of all, fill your schedule, do things. Don't allow yourself to kind of sit in that, like that time, that void. Cause if you do, all you're going to do is you're going to get emotional. If you get emotional, you're going to make an irrational decision. You know, and those those are primarily the reasons for why, you know, your ex is probably not talking to you. Now, I understand every circumstance is different. You know, every situation is different. That's why we always advise having a one on one coaching session, because I can give you a generalized idea as to how this works. And, you know, based on circumstances and situations that I've seen. But at the end of the day, your story is your story. And if you feel like yours is a little bit different, I understand you know, it's, 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 it's difficult for everybody, but it's still your story. You're still living in it. You're still feeling that emotion and it's hard to step outside of that. So again, you know, I, I, I always say, you know, if there's, there's anything that you need, if you need more help, if you need more support, I'm more than willing to do that. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach the link to, uh, some of our coaching sessions that we offer. Give me one sec guys. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and start to look at maybe some of the questions and answer some of the questions that you guys may have. Give me one sec guys. Obviously, we are live, so sometimes there is a lag in time. All right. All right, all right. Sorry, sorry, guys. And if you guys saw in the description as well, um, it was posted on the website. If you guys are in this live session right now, I'm offering 20% off of any of the coaching sessions. Um, so all you have to do is type in uh, the code Danny20 and you are solid. So let's take a look. I'm going to go back here and look at some of the comments and see if there's anything that I can answer for you guys. Mm, so Kelly saying, you know, my ex is being so mean and they're not communicating and they block me for no reason. It hurts. Kelly, you know, completely empathize with you. I know how difficult this can be. And a lot of the times it's one of those circumstances, situations, like I said, you have to take a step back and evaluate the situation. Why are they being mean? You know, and, is, and has it always been a part of their personality throughout the relationship? Have they always been the type of person to not be able to deal with confrontation, to not be able to really work through their issues? Do they have a tendency of getting angry easily? You know, and if that is something that's been consistent throughout the relationship, a pattern of behavior that isn't different, then it may just feel more exacerbated because the breakup has occurred, right? And you don't have that kind of stability or that that feeling or that chance to be able to try to rectify it or, or fix a situation like you have before. Now, if they're just being mean for no reason and they were never like that before, a lot of that has to do with that, what they're processing emotionally, you know, the feelings that they have. Um, that isn't really on you. It's not a reflection of who you are. It's not a reflection of what you've done. The only thing that I would say is that if there have been periods of time that you've been maybe a little bit more needy or a little bit more clingy, that might be contributing to it. But again, you know, their individual actions should not be a reflection of who you are as a person. And we have a tendency of taking that on after a breakup because we try to figure out what's wrong with me. Why am I not good enough? Why am I not the person that they want to be with? And a lot of that has, again, like I said, it has nothing to do with you. You know, there are circumstances in which people just are not compatible. And, and it's inevitable that something will happen at some point. But we have to look at the history of the relationship. And we have to take a look and see what the root causes are for the potential of the breakup. And that can maybe give you a little bit more insight and a little bit more understanding as to why your ex is acting the way they are. Uh, let's see here. Uh, 
Uh, wow, I realized I didn't want him back. I'm in love with a version that does not exist. Fifi, you are a hundred percent true. This happens a lot. Um, and these situations, uh, you are very welcome for the videos. You know, this is, I love doing this. I love getting on here with you guys and, and having these kind of live conversations are fantastic. Um, uh, after meeting your ex for the first time and it went well, uh, do you guys have videos on what to do after meeting with your ex for the first time and it went well? Yes, we do. Um, if you go on our YouTube channel, which is Love Advice TV, um, you will find a lot of videos on there. Um, you can go into YouTube and click with my ex again and you'll see a series of videos on there and you can you can find our video on there 100%. Um, let's see. Let's see, what do we got? What do we got? Yes, time is a big part of this. I know it's what most people don't want to hear. I know that you want a solution right now. I know that you want to hear that, you know, you guys, that there, there's, there's a magic pill that I can give you guys and that, you know, you're going to be able to get your ex back within a week or 30 days. But again, it's really just circumstantial. It depends on the severity of the breakup. Did you guys have an amicable breakup? Did you guys have a hostile breakup? Um, time is a big part of it. You know, time actually allows these these wounds to heal and as cliche as that sounds it's true it's 100 percent true but i get it it's because the anxiety and and the want and the need to be with your ex kind of overrides all of that but if you really just kind of sit back and allow yourself to allow time to do what it does and in the meantime you work on yourself and you invest in yourself it makes all the difference in the world guys i'm telling you 100 percent um mary ann you are very very welcome um Kelly, absolutely. I would love to have a session with you. Um, again, you can use the links that I attached down below. Um, I can reattach those for you as well. Um, let's see. So let's see, Brian, 17 years married, two kids, beautiful home, out of the blue. Uh, where did that go? Out of the blue, she says she's unhappy and leaves the marital home with kids. She used the kids against me to get her away with the terms of the divorce. Brian, I am so sorry. I empathize with you in this situation. You know, 17 years is a really long time to be in a marriage. Um, and it gets that much more complicated when there's kids involved and there's assets involved and all of that stuff. Um, you know, and if it's one of those things that came out of the blue, I understand why you would be trying to figure out why this happened in the situation. But for your circumstance in particular, it would be really difficult for me to give you any kind of recommendations or suggestions unless we actually sat down one-on-one -on -one and had a uh, a private conversation and really kind of dug into the potential reasons for why, you know, the relationship ended. Um, looking at the history really helps to really kind of unpack the present and be able to really move forward in the future, right? Um, all right, guys. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add that link one more time for you guys. Um, and if you guys want to book a coaching session, you can use this link to do it. Sorry, guys, give me one sec. I'm a little new at navigating these live situations, but we are all doing our best. Paste. Okay, so the first one that I'm attaching is the one for with my ex again, and then I will also attach the one for happily committed. And then I'm also going to do the code Danny 20. So that's a code that you could utilize in order to book your session. If you guys don't remember the code, you can go back on the happily committed community website or the love advice TV community website. And I put the information on there. So you should be able to see it. Um, I will also attach my email here. Um, so if you guys have any questions outside of this live, um, I would love to stay in communication with you guys. All right, guys, that is all the time that we have for today. I'm so grateful to have had this time with you guys. Um, thank you so much for joining. Um, obviously, like I said, if you guys have any questions, feel free to book a coaching session, um, a one-on-one. -on -one. Sometimes it's easier. Um, you feel the ability to really kind of open up and we can really kind of get the, to the root of the issues. Because like I said, every person's circumstance is different. And I've also provided my email there. So you guys can shoot me an email if you guys have any questions. Um, and 
I will be doing these lives usually about once a week. Um, I will not be on next week, but I will be on the following week and stay tuned for that topic. It was great being with you guys. Thank you guys so much for being here. I hope you guys are having an amazing day. I hope I answered some of your questions um, and I'll see you guys soon.